All right, so let's talk quickly about the calculator that we're going to use so much this year. Now, the first thing is that we do not use the caret button. We don't use this little X to the 2 or the X to, uh, to the Y button. What we're going to use is the button that the engineers intended for people to use for scientific notation. So if you want to type in this uh, coefficient, you type the 4.587, and then after that, you hit the second function. That's going to give you the little E on the screen. And then you hit the EE button right there, and that's going to give you uh, a place to put the exponent. So then you would hit EE4. And then just do whatever you need to do. And when it gives you your answer, sometimes it'll say something or other E5 or something other E negative 5. You don't write E, you write times 10 to the 5th or times 10 to the negative 5th or whatever. But that's what it means. Now, if you don't have a graphing calculator, then you're just going to look around for the EE button or the EXP button. And that's what you're going to hit. So you put in your coefficient, and then after that you hit the EE or the EXP button, and then your exponent. So if I had to type in 3.40 times 10 to the 4th on my calculator, I type in the 3.40. I'd hit the EE or the EXP button. Some of you have to hit the second function first, and then that. And then you just type in your exponent, a 4. You never, ever, ever hit times 10. Don't hit the multiplication button. Don't type in times 10. Engineers put the EE or the EXP button there to take care of this times 10 business. So don't hit it, because if you do, you're just going to do the order of operations wrong. And you're going to be multiplying your coefficient by 10 first, and then raising it to the power that you want. So you're going to be off by a factor of 10. All right, what's the difference between 3.40 times 10 to the 4th and 3.40 times 10 to the negative 4th? Well, whenever you uh, have a positive exponent, it means the number is going to get bigger than this original number. And whenever you have a negative exponent, it means the number is going to get smaller than this, number, this uh, original number. So when you have 3.40 times 10 to the positive 4th, it means you need to multiply. Multiply the coefficient, 3.40, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, four times. And every time you get you multiply it by 10, it gets bigger. So if you start with 3.40, oh, and you multiply it by 10, now we have 34. Multiply it by 10 again, 340. Multiply it by 10, multiply it by 10. And this is what the actual number is. Now this isn't a real big number. We can easily put 3, 4, and then 0, 0, 0 in our calculators. But if you had... Uh, 3.40 times 10 to the 21st, no one wants to write all those zeros. So that's why we're going to use scientific notation. It really means you have an actual big number. You got all these zeros there. Um, but this is kind of the disguised form, and this is the form um, that's nice and quick and easy to put in our calculator. All right, I don't know what that's doing in the middle of our screen. But the next question says, what if you've got, or the next part, what if you've got a negative exponent? Well, negative exponent means divide. So divide 3.40 by 10 four times. So divide it by 10, divide it by 10. And every time you divide, you get smaller. And you move the decimal point to the left. So you start with 3.40, and then you divide and divide and divide and divide. And then you put your new decimal place. And fill them all in with zeros to hold the place, and that's a very small number. And finally, if you do have a negative exponent, it's going to be found between 0 and 1 on the number line. So if you can imagine 0 right here, we've got 1 here, and we've got negative 1 there. Any number that has a positive exponent is going to be found out here. These are all positive exponents. Or out here. These are also positive exponents. And you might be saying, well, how do you get over there if it's got a, a positive exponent? The only time you're on this side is if you have a negative coefficient, negative x, well, maybe x isn't a good idea, what if we say uh, negative y times 10 to the 5th, or negative y times 10 to the 50th, that's going to be over here on a number line. If you're on this side of the number line, this is pretty easy, this is just plain old y times 10 to the 5th, or 10 to the 50th, or whatever you happen to be. But if you fall in this range, let me switch up colors here. If you fall between 0 and negative 1, or 0 and positive 1, it means that you have a negative exponent. So if you're on this side, this might be y times 10 to the negative 2nd, or y times 10 to the negative 20th, or whatever. 
If you're over here between negative 1 and 0, it means you have a negative coefficient to get you on the negative side. So it's negative y times 10 to the negative second, or negative 20th, or whatever you want. So these guys have positive coefficients, positive coefficients, and they're on the positive side of the number line. These guys over here, they have a negative exponent, or a negative coefficient, negative coefficient, and they're on the negative side of the number line. So positive coefficient puts you on the positive side, negative coefficient puts you on the negative side. It's the exponent that decides, are you between 0 and 1, either positive or negative, or are you greater than 1 or greater than negative 1? Okay. All right. Now, what I want you to remember is that every time you increase by a power of 1, you go from 10 to 0 to 10 to the first, 10 to the second, and so forth. Let's get this little guy out of there. Okay. Anytime you increase 10 to the second, or 10 to the 0, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third, you're increasing by 10. You're taking what you had before and multiplying it by 10. Multiply this by 10. Multiply this by 10. So it's an, ex an exponential increase. You're going to increase like that. Could you imagine if you were getting paid like this? First month of the job, you get paid this much. And then you get a times 10% increase. So now all of a sudden you're going up by 10. And then you to get this group big amount, and now you're going up by 10 more. Not just adding a few more, but multiply what you're getting times 10. And then you get paid this, and now you're going up by 10 again. Times 10. Take whatever you're getting and multiply it by 10. And then take this big amount and times 10, and so forth. So you could see that you're going to be shooting up the scale pretty quickly. Start off slow and then make an exponential increase. All right, got a big mess here. Let's erase all the ink. Okay. It says, what's the difference between 3.40 times 10 to the 4th and 3.40 uh, times 10 to the 5th? 3.40 means that 3.40 should be multiplied by 10 four times. So you take 3.40 and you move it 1, 2, 3, 4 places. 3.40 times 10 to the 5th means you multiply it 5 times. Now that doesn't seem like a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You're probably just thinking, hey, throw in another 0. It's not a big deal. It actually is a huge deal. It's 10 times greater. Imagine if you were getting paid 34000 and then somebody tells you, hey, you know what, we're going to increase your salary, and we're going to make it 10 times greater, and now all of a sudden you're getting paid $340,000. That's a big difference. That one extra zero, huge, huge change. So when we talk about atoms and we talk about getting smaller by an exponent, you know, negative 19th or something, that's huge. That's a big, big, big change. It's 10 times smaller than what negative 18th was, which is absurdly small and so forth. Or if we're talking about getting bigger, if we're talking about uh, the mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, that's way bigger than times 10 to the 22nd, which is a huge number to begin with. So anytime you make a one number change, it's really a 10-fold increase. So if you're going from 22 up to 23 and then maybe up to exponent 24, this is a times 10 increase. This is a times 10 increase. So overall, it's 100 times greater. And you just went up two numbers from 22 up to 24. Okay. All right. Convert the following into scientific notation or out of scientific notation. So this one's in scientific notation already. There's a negative exponent. So that means we're going to divide, divide, divide. So we've got 3.40. We're going to divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. Put your new decimal or new decimal place and all your zeros. There's your new number. This one, this is times 10 to the first. So you're going to move it over one place. You're going to go from there to there, and you end up with 90.0. This number is not in scientific notation, so we have to put it in. So we're going to put our decimal, even though it's not there. We're going to put our decimal at the end. We're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. So 7 times 10 to the sixth. If you want to check to see if you're doing this right, ask yourself how you would do it in reverse. Would you multiply 7 times 10 6 times and then get that? Or should you divide 7 by 10 6 times? And then would that give you? And obviously, positive exponent, we're going to multiply by 10 to get that big number. This one, the flip side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, put it right there. Notice that I always have one digit to the left of the decimal right there. And in order to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
In order to get from this number, 3.43, back to this little tiny number here, I need to divide it by 10 six times. So it's actually going to be a negative exponent. I'm going to divide 3.43, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then I'll end up with this number again. So just ask yourself, if I was to reverse it, could I easily do that by multiplying or dividing? If you multiply, it's a positive exponent, like here. If you have to divide, it's a negative exponent, like there. All right, this one. 1, 2, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative second, and move a decimal point over three places, 1.240 times 10 to the third. Okay, So there's your exponents. All right, now we have to use the calculator. So it says, use your calculator to solve the following problems and record your answer in scientific notation. Now, sometimes your calculator gives you your answer in scientific notation. Sometimes it doesn't, and you have to convert it back into scientific notation. So here we go. We're going to type in, everybody clear out your calculator, type in 3.4 then hit the EE or the EXP button. Do not hit times 10. Don't hit the multiplication button at all. Hit the EE or EXP and then type in 4. Then hit the plus sign. Then type in 8.00 EE or EXP and then 3. And then hit equals and you'll get your answer. And your calculator will probably spit out 42000. And you look at that number and it's not that big of a number. It's, we can probably handle writing that down and not making an error. But the question says put it in scientific notation. So you have to assume the decimal point goes here. You're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4. Four places. So it's going to be 4.2 times 10 to the 4th. And there's your answer. And just a quick little uh, aside here. I kept 4.2 because this has got two sig figs. Um, so we'll just keep it there. there. There's some more that you guys need to know about lining them all up and so forth, taking them out of scientific notation, making them all the same uh, when you add and subtract, but we don't have to keep all those zeros. We just keep 4.2. All right, the next one here. We're going to be multiplying numbers, so type in 8.98. EE, you don't hit times 10. You hit the EE button or the EXP, and then negative 2. Find the little negative sign, usually down at the bottom, and then hit a 2. Then hit the multiply. Then 4.34 EE, and then the little negative 3. And when you do that, your calculator spits out 3.89732 E negative 4. Whenever you see the E and you go to write it on paper, you need to not write the E and replace it with times 10. Put it in the proper form format for scientific notation. And then we got a mess of numbers here. So let's consider sig figs quick. We got three sig figs here and three sig figs here, so we're going to keep three sig figs there. Now before we lop off the 732, we check what does the 7 do to the 9, and it rounds it up, becomes 10, and that when you carry the 1, the 8 becomes a 9, and it's 3.90 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, and there's your answer. So be able to do scientific notation, obviously come with, to the exam with a calculator that works, and that you know how to uh, work for the EE button or the EXP button.